do the best we can. I'll ask you to turn to Genesis chapter 22. I thank the musicians for their help tonight. Genesis chapter 22, and we'll begin in verse number 1. If you turn there with me, say amen. 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 The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham sat, lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, Son, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar uh, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. You may be seated today. If I had a thought for this this, this evening, I'd just give it a title. It's never too late. Glory. It's never too late. Amen. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God established this in the early days of mankind here in Genesis chapter number 22 with Abraham that it is never too late. Amen. He told Abraham to take his son Isaac, his only son, whom Abraham loved dearly, to a land called Moriah, to a location in Moriah that God would choose yes. and to Glory. sacrifice his son as a burnt offering. And if you notice with me here, Abraham didn't argue with God. There yes. wasn't anything said. There wasn't any kind of uh, complaint made. Uh, there was just complete uh, and immediate right. obedience right. unto God. Yes. And I want to tell you today, that's exactly what God is looking for out of each and every one of us uh, is submissive uh, and complete uh, obedience Amen. unto Him. Uh, whatever He saith unto us, uh, yes. we need to do immediately and be obedient unto Him. Yes. And that's what Abraham did. And he took Isaac, uh, and, and when he come to the place of Moriah that God had told him to go, uh, Abraham said to the young men, uh, You stay here, uh, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship uh, yeah. and come again yeah. unto you. Uh, what a statement of complete trust uh, yeah. and a statement of complete uh, satisfaction in God and knowing uh, that he and Isaac both uh, would come back to the place uh, where they left their servant. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to know that's trust in God to make a statement like that. Come on. And so he left his servants there and him and Isaac went forward. 
And when they came to the location, uh, Abraham built an altar there, uh, and he placed the wood upon the altar, and he began to bind Isaac, uh, and he laid Isaac upon the altar. And when he drew back the knife to slay Isaac, uh, there was a voice out of heaven, the angel of God, saying, uh, Abraham, Abraham, uh, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou any, anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God. Uh, aren't you glad that we're a generation today uh, that can know God in a personal and a real way? Uh, aren't you glad today that God didn't only know Abraham, uh, but he know, knows you by name uh, and he knows me by name? Uh, I'm so glad that I've got that relationship with God uh, that he knows me by my name. Yes, hallelujah. Uh, he said, don't lay a hand upon that boy. I know now that you fear God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and he saw a ram in a thicket caught by his horns in that thicket, and he offered that ram as a sacrifice unto God, and he and Isaac returned to the location of that where they had left their servants. That's God saying to Abraham, it is never too late. You be obedient unto me and I'll prove to you that it's never yeah. too late. Child of God, you obey the Lord and he will show you and prove to you that it's never too late. Oh, it doesn't God. matter what the devil says. Oh, it doesn't matter what the doctors have told you. It doesn't matter what circumstances say. It doesn't matter what anyone might tell you in the church. Amen. It's never too late That's for right. God. Hallelujah. Don't believe that God has walked out on you. God doesn't walk out on us. That's right. It's never too late for us to believe God. Come on, amen. amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's proved over and over and over, right. both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Amen. It's never too late. Amen. Thank God. Thank, Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God proved that to Israel when they came to the crossing of the Red Sea and the Egyptians was in, in heavy pursuit behind them to take them back into bondage. God proved that it's never too late. That's right. Amen. He proved that to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown into a fiery furnace. Yeah. Yeah. He proved that to Daniel when he was thrown into a lion's den and should have been eaten by lions. He proved to Daniel that it's never too late. Amen. He proved to Jonah when he ended up in the belly of a great fish uh, that it's never too late. Uh, Hallelujah. in the New Testament, now I could go on and on, uh, but in the New Testament, he proved to the people with withered hands uh, that it's never too late. Uh, he proved to those with blinded eyes uh, that it's never too late. Glory. Uh, he proved to the cripple that it's never too late. Yes. Uh, in John chapter 11, uh, he proved to Lazarus' and sisters uh, that it's never too late. Yes. Uh, Lazarus was sick. Uh, they called for Jesus. Mary and Martha did. Uh, and Jesus delayed going to Bethany. Uh, and because he delayed going to Bethany, oh. Lazarus died and was buried. Amen. Oh. And when he finally oh. come to the outskirts of Beth Bethany, Martha met him there. And she said, Lord, if you would have been here, Lord, it's yes. too late now. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would have lived. Jesus said, he'll live again. Oh, yeah. He'll live again. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, I know we'll live again in the resurrection at the last day. And he said to her, I am the resurrection. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. If anybody lives now or in the uh, later on, uh, it's going to be because Jesus he is the resurrection. Yeah. He is the life. Yeah. He is the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. I am the resurrection. Yeah. And Martha said unto him, when he told them to roll away the stone, uh, she said, Lord, he's been dead four days. By now he stinketh. And he said, didn't I tell you, Martha, to believe? That's right. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when Jesus said with a loud voice, 
Lazarus, come forth. I want you to know there wasn't nothing going to prevent that young man from coming up out of that grave. Hallelujah. Wasn't nothing going to stop him uh, from walking out of that grave uh, right. fully and completely alive. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. He stepped out of that grave a live man because of the power of God and because it's never too late. I'm sure there were those standing around that tomb that was crying and weeping and Martha was probably weeping and there were those that were saying, oh, it can't be done, this can't be done. But Jesus proved to every one of them there that it's never too late. And he's proven to the church today that it's never too late. He's letting us know, brother and sister, regardless to what we may think, it's never too late. Glory. There are those today in the church that says, well, I, I've heard of miracles like that in the past, but I've never seen a miracle like that. I've heard of great, mighty works of God. Uh-huh. But I myself have to really doubt that those kind of miracles still take place. I've never seen one. After all, I, I've never seen a true miracle. I've never seen a blind man with his eyes open or, or a cripple walk again. Perhaps God don't do what he used to do. Well, will you read to me today Hebrews 13 and 8? Yeah, yeah. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means what he did then, he will do today. And if he'll do it today, he'll do it tomorrow. If he raised Lazarus up out of that grave, he can raise your mother out of that grave, your grandmother out of that grave. He's able to do anything. And the Bible says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above everything that we ask or that we can think in our own minds. He's able today because it's never too late with Christ. Hallelujah. It's never too late. Hallelujah. And I could talk to you about miracle after miracle from the Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. But I want to just tell you, those of you that are looking this direction, you are looking at a standing, walking, yes. living, Glory. talking Thank miracle. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was born with diabetes. Diagnosed at nine months of age and was put on insulin shots at nine months old. And between my mother and my daddy and my wife and I, we have spent multiplied thousands of dollars on insurances, co-pays, medications, hospitalizations, anything you can think of. Testing supplies, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars. I feel like the woman in Mark chapter 5 uh, who sought a physician after physician because she spent all she had, but the Bible said she only grew worse. She yeah. wasn't better, but she only grew worse. Yeah. And that's exactly what was happening to me. I lived kindly a normal teenage life, but in my early 20s, I started having trouble with my lungs. I was put in the hospital time and time again uh, with pneumonia. And then at, after a few, few more years, I started having diabetic problems. My feet were swelling and I was put on diuretics to, to help me to get rid of the weight that my body was gaining. And later, just to go take a long cut through this trail. At the age of 52, my kidneys failed totally. And uh, the doctor in Houston at Herman Hospital told me, you're going into the hospital to begin dialysis. I said, I can't go. 
It was a week of Thanksgiving, 2010, and I said, I've got a big crowd of people coming to my house this Thanksgiving. I said, I can't go into the hospital now. And she said, I'm not worried about this Thanksgiving. It's the Thanksgivings to come that I'm concerned about. Yeah. And she put me in the hospital. Yeah. I finally submitted to it. And they started dialysis on me the next morning. And for three days straight, they give me dialysis. The third day, I became very, very, very sick. But they was uh, establishing a spot for me in Livingston where I live for dialysis. And when they finally established that spot, they let me go home. And I took dialysis for a few months, and I told my wife, I went on a Saturday morning, and I come home, uh, and I took her in my arms, and I told her, I said, baby, if I don't get a miracle, I'm going to die. I said, I, I, I'm, I'm settled with that issue. I know I'm going to die if I don't get a miracle. And she said, I know. And she cried with me holding her. And on Tuesday, April the 27th, April the 26th, at 3.35 in the morning, my phone rang. It was Herman Hospital in Houston saying, come to Houston, we've got a match. And my wife and I hurried and drove down there. They prepped me for surgery. I took a shower. They put an IV in my hand, and we laid there for 12 hours. Time passed. We didn't hear a word. Usually they say if they tell you you're a transplant patient, you've got to be there within an hour. But 12 hours passed. Nothing happened. 13 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours passed. Nothing had happened. I finally kind of determined in my mind that I wasn't going to get the transplant. But in the 15th hour, <laughs> Thank you. Somebody come running down the hall. I don't know who it was. I just heard them yelling. It's a match. It's a match. It's a go. It's a go. It's a go. Hallelujah. And they rolled my bed down to surgery waiting or surgery prep. And the last thing I said to my wife was, uh, if I don't see you again here, I'll see you in heaven. I Hallelujah. love you. And they rolled me into surgery at five minutes to midnight. Do you see the significance of that? Five minutes to midnight. Just before the midnight hour, the Lord came on the scene. Amen. And the surgery would, took 12 hours. They not only put a kidney in me, they also put a pancreas in me. Praise God. And I was in the hospital for six weeks to the day. And I had to have the second surgery because they couldn't get my fever to go down. And I had what was called acute appendicitis. A pen, uh, uh, pancreatitis, I mean. The, the pancreas ha had some infection in it. And they had to open me back up and clean that pancreas up. And then they put me in ICU four different times isolation one time and I was there for six weeks oh. before I got to go home and my wife was my nurse at home and nursed me back to health and and did, did many many things for me but it was God that proved to me that it is never 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 too late I know that there's a lot of people would say well, that's a miracle of medical of the medical profession. Uh, no, that's a miracle of Almighty God uh, that just allowed the medical profession to do uh, what they do. Uh, it's Almighty God that gave the miracle, and I thank Him for it every single day. He's worthy of praise. Uh, he's worthy of praise. Uh, he's worthy of praise for what He has done. In my life and in my body, 
I thank him today for the miracle that he's given me. I've had some downs from time to time, but but now I'm no longer a diabetic. I no longer take any kind of insulin whatsoever. I have no trouble with diabetes. My blood sugar is always normal. I told my wife, I said, I don't know what it is to live without diabetes. I said, but I'm going to be glad to live without it. Amen. They said that somebody told me the other day that pancreases are not a su successful surgery. Uh, I said, well, this one is. Yeah. I can tell you that. I don't know about what you think or where you've been, uh, but I know that this one is. Uh, I said, God gave it yeah. to me, uh, and God yes. is going to make it work. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I'm glad to know today uh, that it's never too late. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. That just kind of sums up very briefly what's taking place in my life. But I want to tell you tonight that it's never too late Hallelujah. to pray. Amen. Amen. Never too late to pray. Amen. pray. The psalmist David said in Psalms 18 and 6, In my distress I called unto the Lord and cried unto my God. Amen. He heard my voice out of his holy hill. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Yes. Oh, yes. I cried, I called, he heard, and he answered, yeah. is what David was saying. You may say to me, preacher, I have prayed. Then I'm going to tell you, pray again. Pray again. Yeah. Pray again. Hallelujah. The philosophy of, of so much Christianity and religion today is uh, if you pray more than one time, uh, you must not have had faith. But I'm going to tell you, that's not what Jesus taught in this Bible. Uh, you pray until the answer comes. Yes. Uh, and there's power in prayer. Uh, Hallelujah. There's wonder working power in prayer. Uh, there's changes through prayer. Prayer, brother and sister, today, uh, don't let the devil tell you any otherwise. You continue to pray. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Peter was put in prison in Acts chapter 12, and Herod was going to kill him right after Easter. But the Bible says in verse number 5 of Acts chapter 12, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church oh, unto yes. God Holy for him. Praise without God. ceasing. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed. Oh, yes. And don't tell me that this flesh didn't get tired of praying at the midnight hour. I know this flesh become tired of praying at the midnight hour, but they didn't give up. Come on. They didn't quit. They held on to God. Amen. And because they did, the angel of the Lord in the midnight hour went into that prison and unlocked that prison and smote Peter on the side and said, wrap your cloak around you and get up and follow me. And Peter walked out of that prison a free man yes. by the power of Almighty God because there is power, power, wonder work and power in prayer, and it is never too late to pray. I don't care what people may tell you. I don't care what your best friend may say. It's never too late to pray. Thank God. I know your pastor well enough to tell you that he'll tell you that, that it's never too late to pray. It's never too late. You don't give up praying. When you feel like quitting praying, when no answer has come, you don't ever quit praying. I'm going to say this. The man with an experience is never subject to the man, or, or the man uh, who has an argument, rather, has... Or the man with an experience, I got it right the first time, is never subject to a man with an argument. That's right, amen. That's right, amen. A man who wants to just argue with you that there's no reason to pray anymore, 
He don't know what he's talking about. That's he's right. talking to about Come talking on. to a man who's had an experience yeah. in God. Come on, he's yeah. answered yes. prayer for him. Yes. He can talk all he wants to talk, yes. but he's wasting his time and That's wasting right. his breath uh, because people who's had God answer prayer for them knows uh, that there's power in prayer uh, yes. and God.